Coping with catastrophe never comes easy. There's the physical damage that's obvious to the eye and the more discreet emotional toll that often comes with a crisis. It could be a terror attack a decade ago or a hurricane last month. And I talked about that and the distinctions with the former New Jersey governor, Christy Whitman. Well, the devastation was huge, obviously totally different. One's an act of Mother Nature, one's an act of terrorists, a uh, whole lot of lives lost uh, in 9-11 that you didn't see, fortunately, in Sandy. But the economic impact of Sandy, particularly on this state, I mean, you can't make up for the devastation of loss of life, and we lost an enormous number of lives in 9-11. Uh, but still, having said that, the economic impact of the loss along the shore for us, tourism being our second largest industry, uh, is going to be with us for years to come. It's going to be difficult to overcome, how but we you, will. As a leader, how do you then deal with the suddenly the idea that all of that which was forever is not going to be there perhaps ever again the way it was. Right. And certainly, as you say, in the short term, there's going to be losses. How do, you, how do you suddenly adjust to that new reality? Well, you do a couple things. I mean, for a lot of what Governor Christie is already doing, you, first of all, you have to assess what your damages are. You go to the federal government and get as much help as you can for the rebuild. Then he's, I think, in a very smart move, brought in someone who's James Lee Witt, whose credentials are unparalleled as far as dealing with this kind of rebuild. And of course, you have the office of the state plan in the lieutenant governor's office, and those two should work together. Because frankly, we can't rebuild the way we have. And what we need to do, and I think they will be doing it, is bring the people in from the communities along the shore, let's say Seabright, and say, OK, what was it? that drew you here? What was it that made you want to live here? What are the values we want to preserve? And then how do we do that in a sustainable way for the future? Understanding we can't do it in exactly the same way we've done in the past. So the idea of taking a photograph, sending out an engineer and a construction crew and saying, rebuild that, that's, that's a no-go. Well, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, this is, we've had, remember, we've had 200-year storms in 14 months in this state, with a couple of nor'easters thrown in, in between, just for good measure. The climate is changing. Uh, whether people want to talk about that or not, it's true. And we have to adjust to that. We have to understand that we do see sea levels rise, which means that when you get a big blow like that, irrespective of what caused it, it's going to cause more damage and further in. And we've, so we've got to build with those kinds of recognitions in mind in order to provide the kind of sustainable growth that we want to have in this state. We're going to rebuild. This state will rebuild. But again, it's a question that not, can't be exactly the way it was before. And we're going to have to be smarter about the way we do that rebuilding. It's, uh, Can you do it as an And there are going to be some places where we're going to have to say, you know what, you can't build here anymore because the rest of the country isn't going to continue to pay. All the taxpayers aren't going to continue to pay to rebuild. And we're all paying a price. Does this have to be a regional approach, dealing with New York, dealing with the tri-state area, you know, New Jersey can't go it alone here, I presume. Well, we certainly can for our own shore, whether we build groins out into the ocean and things like that that will protect the beaches for their, and our own zoning codes and things. That will be ours. Um, as far as the long-term look, it always is helpful. Mother Nature does not recognize geopolitical boundaries, so uh, it is helpful to be able to be talking to your neighbors on how they're doing it so what we're doing doesn't exacerbate a problem somewhere else and vice versa. The $60 billion that's being proposed as hurricane relief. Do you think yeah. it's adequate? Well, it's not going to it's not going to completely suffice. No, we've already seen that that what the estimates are from just New York and New Jersey and I think part of Delaware is in that 80 billion dollar figure that they've talked about. But what's really going to hurt New Jersey is the lost income. It's not just the rebuild. That money's just for rebuilding. However, we rebuild, that's what that's for and for providing some housing, temporary housing for people who desperately need it now. But we are going to see, with tourism being our second largest industry, tourism is not going to come back this summer the way it was last summer. Uh, and for the mom and pop stores along the boardwalk, they can't even begin to rebuild until there is a boardwalk, which is not going to happen for a while. We're going to see a drop in income, which is another thing that the governor has to confront, which is what that means to the budget. And of course, the municipalities have all set their budgets based on the property values because the property tax is their main source of income. And they're going to have to revalue. If you can't charge somebody the same amount for a 3,000 square foot home that, when there's no home there. You know? So reality. they're going to have to take another look. And their incomes are going to be vastly reduced. And that's going to put more pressure on the state to help the municipalities. So it's, 
it's one of those ripple effects that is going to continue. It's going to be very difficult to deal with for a long time. Governor, we'll leave that there for now. Thank you for Pleasure. coming in.